Let us begin. How do y'all come on? Friday night. Ah! New music Friday. Guys, look at this. We did it. We did this thing. We printed a CD. We made CDs. We have always wanted to have a yeah. CD. You, you can't even play these anymore. You, this is like a vintage. It's collectors. It's a collector of CDs. Welcome tonight, guys. <laughs> uh, man, we, we hope... <laughs> Uh, our, our record dropped today, so we, um, I hope you've been dropped, <laughs> dropped. <laughs> that, that, that's, that language actually matches what Shane's wearing right now. Thank so you. that's, dropped, that's good. Some new clothes. Um, but we're just going to share some of these songs and, uh, we have Ross and Corey here. They're part of our team yep. and some other team here going on. And, uh, this is, we're actually rolling the dice a little bit because, the last time uh, I played and sang these songs was um, eight months ago in the stairwell and uh, most of these. And so it's going to be, uh, this is actually, you're, you're joining us for a rehearsal <laughs> and we're, we're just going to do our best and, uh, and sing these songs so, um, so that you can hear them live tonight, right now at seven o'clock. <laughs> Join us. All right. We're really rolling. Okay. We're really doing this. Uh, so you guys ready? Kinda. I'm ready. You ready? So ready. Okay. Great. Everybody ready out there? Okay. We don't have a bass guitar, so if, if you don't, if you're listening through your phone, it doesn't really matter. Um, just, just I was just gonna point that out. So, um, but we're gonna we're gonna boost the low end in the in the, uh, in the, in key, the guitar in, in the keyboard. <laughs> okay. You ready? Two, three. Fully God and fully man No human mind could comprehend The fullness of obedience To the point of death when it made no sense How marvelous this mystery My king would give his life for me
Come on. Come on. So um, that was called Greatest Love, and a um, song I wrote with a buddy, Brian Fowler. And uh, this record, um, if you don't know, is called Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs. And the reason is, am I, I'm supposed to be looking at you, Jacob, right? That's where the people are. That's where you people are. The reason is, is uh, Colossians 3.16. And this is becoming a um, sort of a mission statement, like through and through, um, because of this scripture, Colossians 3.16 says, May the word of Christ dwell richly in you as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom through singing. Isn't that crazy? The word of Christ might dwell richly in you as you sing to one another and to God. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratefulness to God in your heart. So because we're so original... And, uh, you know, my name's Shane, and his name's Shane, and we sang a few psalms, and we're called a record Psalms 2 and 3. Uh, we just thought we would call the record Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs because on the record is Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs. Does that make sense? It's a good reason. That's pretty complicated, isn't it? So complicated. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to be singing some of those for you today. And the next one we're going to do is Psalm 42. And I love this song so much. Uh, for me, singing through the Psalms is like, um, when, it, when, when the Bible says the word of Christ begins to dwell richly, that's a really good way to explain what happens to me when I, when I sing God's word. Um, I I knew it one way and then I sing it and then I know it a completely different way, almost like it's dwelling in me. And, uh, and so Psalm 42 has been that. And so this, this last year has been super tough, um, for, for a ton of us, man. And, uh, my wife has had such a, um, incredibly hard year. Dad passed away and then a whole, whole series of just waves crashing and crashing and crashing. And I was in the stairwell, which is just 10 paces that way. Um, it's, it's usually where I'm at when I'm, when I'm singing or just crying out to God. In this moment, I was, I was doing both. And I was, I was remembering the song, um, Come Thou Fount, which I love, an old hymn. Um, I didn't grow up with hymns, and so, you know, every hymn is kind of new for me, and so I just, they're just amazing. Uh, Come Thou Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy, never ceasing call for songs of lavish praise. Except in that moment and in that season, like it didn't feel like I, and, and, and when I say feel, like put quotes around feel, it didn't feel like I was living inside of streams of mercy. It felt like I was living and receiving streams of trouble, like never ceasing that were calling for songs of praise. And so my, my, you know, lament, which is in this psalm, it was so helpful, was, um, it goes on and on and on. Where is my God? That's what it sounded like. So, it, I mean, there is, it's about as loud as I can be. Like singing, if you didn't know, for most people is louder than they're shouting. It's the loudest thing we can do. And so I'm just going, where is my God? What's going on? This doesn't feel right. And I was lifting my complaints to God. But, but then I was trusting God. And so that, that was like the series is like, I turn to him, I, I, I lift my complaint to him, and then I just trust him because I do believe that he is good and he's sovereign and he's going to take care of me and he can handle my complaints and he can handle David's complaints and he can handle your complaints and just if we can just be okay with that and be honest with God and I think that the spirit in us turns almost like groanings too deep for words as he intercedes for us and it does turn into worship it turns into to, it starts with complaint and it goes into to praise and worship 
And that is a miracle in these kinds of seasons. So we're going to sing it. I'll stop talking. We'll sing it for you. Um, uh, it's just a, a version of Psalm 42. Are we an E? We're an E. Yeah, that's right. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you. All my tears have been my father. Day and night, my only food. Oh, my soul, you feel forgotten. Put your hope in Christ alone. And as the deer longs for the so my soul longs to be home. Come now, found a living water. Tune my heart to bless your name. Streams of truth. Cries out for answers as your waves crash over me. Let your goodness like a fair bind my broken heart to thee. Oh, in the
Okay. <laughs> Wrote this song with a dear friend, Robbie C., and a guy named James Teeley, who I don't know if I've met, but he's awesome. <laughs> Thy bleeding sacrifice, O oh Christ. How brutal yet how splendid That tragic act of love has paid The price my sin demand From Eden's wilted promises To my heart's dark affections Thy bleeding sacrifice Purchased my redemption There was no shame more deep than thine No agony more big Now risen and exalted Christ Is Jesus Christ the Savior Who burst through every band of death all God's children and trumpets howl and mountains shake announcing heaven's splendor the gates of New Jerusalem will open wide to greet us and every tongue on earth will say oh glory Remember that time you like sang with you used to sing with me? I know. Me? I was just like, that would I be don't great if you'd sing with me because then you know I could be not screaming on my own. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that song is really fun, um, and it you know kind of almost it fits sort of in the in somewhere in the middle, which a lot a few of these songs do of like hymns and spiritual songs. Is it's all you know some of the psalms have a hymn, and um, but but this one is um, is based on just that old, old prayer that Christ has died, Christ will come, and hallelujah, Christ will come again. And so each verse is split up into those topics. Verse 1, um, verse 2, verse 3, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. It's super, it's super fun, um, at least for me. I like that. I like the organizational structure. 
That's good structure. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Bible structure. Okay, where are we good. at, man? That's good. <clears throat> so some, uh, there is two songs on this record. It's like 65 degrees in here, but I'm like sweating. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're working. Yeah. Um, there's two songs on the record that uh, were co-written with a dear sister named Fanny Crosby. And uh, she was a lady who wrote a bunch of hymns. Uh, one's like Blessed Assurance. Maybe you've heard of that one. And uh, she, I think, was blind from birth. And she, she just had a really, really, really amazing gift of articulating um, how much she loved Jesus and helping us um, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And it, the cool thing is, is there's some kind of vault was opened, and like all of a sudden we had uh, a bunch of her her poems in kind of in hymn structure that had never been seen or heard or whatever. And so, um, uh, a buddy of mine, Grayson, and uh, a buddy of mine, Brian, got together, and we just we just looked at some of her old her old hymns. And, uh, and we put music to them and um, added sections. And it was just, uh, it was just a tremendous honor to um, be with one of those great cloud of witnesses and, and write these kinds of songs for the church. Um, this song's called Only There. And, um, and it's, it's, I think, pretty obvious. It's, it's, a, it's actually a great uh, Good Friday song because I remember we, we did it on this last Good Friday because, um, you know, on Good Friday, you're always looking for something that doesn't like, or, or, or maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but, it, you know, you want to you want to feel the weight of the, the death and crucifixion of Christ, you know, and, and you know, kind of save some room for the celebration of on Sunday for when he comes out of the grave. Granted, knowing he's going to come out of the grave, it's really hard not to celebrate <laughs> um, every day, you know, but uh, this one is just hinges on the cross of Christ. And, uh, and where we first found, and these are mainly her words, um, where she found Fanny, found freedom and richness and purpose and meaning and weights lifted off only there at the cross. So I'll we'll play for you. What is this in? Oh, that's good. Good I looked. Good I looked.
time you forgot to sing on the bridge, but that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did sing. Well, you mean, eventually, you, you, you got it. I was in there. Do You don't even have me on your ears. I do. It was like, you're kind of like, uh, um, uh. yeah, but you're, yeah, but you're like, because I was like, I you know, know, like, who's that I'm woman singing? Sing. And it's like, oh, because he's not moving his mouth. He's like, it's it's Sorry. Shane. Oh, um, okay, that was awesome. And I, I will have to just say out loud that I know, I I want you to know that I know that I'm I'm um, botching some words up, and I just want to point that out that I know that I'm doing that. You do. You know, just I, I'm probably just to make myself feel better, um, but I have bad eyes, and um, these are new songs for me. They're very new. And I'm I'm trying I'm doing my best. Dude. Scarlett's doing amazing hey, at like I helping you. me with these words. Okay, so uh, that one happened, and then so I'm gonna read Psalm eight real fast. Not all of it, most of it. Psalm eight. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. And then the next few verses say that you've given him dominion over the earth. And then it ends by going, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, what is man that you would care for him? And you know why this, this psalm... Um, really is special to me 
we just have a just just kind of a just a normal little melody of the song. I mean, it's an old song. We rip everything off. So we're, you know, pl- plagiarizing is what we do. And there's just an, a little um, simple melody to it. But I was thinking about it. And uh, I, do you know that God used the moon? Do you know this? I don't know. For God what? used the moon. Something's kind of like, you I don't hear, hear that? that. God used the moon and the stars to save me. I had a moment um, going into my ninth grade year with my good buddy Zach on his mom's roof. We used to play football on his mom's roof at night. Obviously, that's what you do in West Texas. And uh, it's, it's normal things. People did that. Totally normal. <laughs> That's why I fell off twice. Um, but yeah, another story. And uh, you know, we took a break from football. It was probably eleven o'clock p.m., something like that. And uh, the Lord, through the glory of what He had created, gave me this moment that is best articulated in those verses that I just read, where I didn't have the words for it. But now that I know soulmate, in that moment, it was the one who put the, the, the moon and the stars in place with his fingertips. Would he care for me? And I, I didn't grow up with the gospel. I didn't know anything about Jesus. And that was such a, that, that was such a tug moment for me that I literally, my mom was Catholic and my dad was a John Wayne religion. Everything goes black. He eventually came to Christ when he was 65, which is awesome. But I had to sneak because of, because of my mom at the time and because we grew up kind of loosely going to Catholic churches. Two days after this moment happened on the rooftop, I snuck, I snuck out. I told my parents, I'm going to go play basketball. And I went to uh, a youth group. And I heard the gospel, and I heard exactly how he cared for me. I, he- I heard the one who created the moon and stars with his fingers and the Grand Canyon with just a, with a word. I-, I learned how he cared for me so much that he sent his only son to die for my sin. And I had never heard that before. And, um, and God saved me um, because I wanted, I wanted to be saved and I wanted to know him. And I just couldn't get over the fact that he would care for me. And, uh, and he used the moon and the stars. But if you go on in the psalm, it, it doesn't say that he's crowned the moon and the stars with glory and honor. Or, you know, Mount Everest with glory and honor. Or the Pacific Ocean with glory and honor. In the West Texas sky, he says he's crowned you with glory and honor. That is true for every single person who's ever lived because we are created in the image of God. He's crowned you with glory and honor. And uh, so whether you, you just glance up tonight, um, that would be an awesome thing to do or whether you just turn to the right or the left and you look at um, your son or your daughter, your brother, your neighbor, you are beholding the glory of God. And it should cause us to say, oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And so can we sing it together? I don't know if we have, I don't think you have words on screen or anything like that. We'll sing it to you. Oh, Lord, our Lord, oh, how awesome are your ways, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, may we see your kingdom come, Father, may your will be done in all the earth, in all the earth. stars you set in motion, oh God, I 
sing all glory and all honor but it's man that you are mindful the son of man that you would care for him we sing all glory and honor oh lord our lord oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name in all the earth oh lord our lord may we see your kingdom come father may your will be done in all the earth in all the earth you gave dominion to your children and you crowned them oh god with glory and honor so we we'll sing of your name live our lives for your greatness oh god in your glory and honor oh lord oh lord oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name Come make much of the name above all names. Creation cries out, every knee bows. Jesus, we crown you, O oh Lord, our Lord. The earth, the earth is full of the glory. We're going to do a couple tunes uh, just back to back here. What, in A flat? Is that what's going on? Yeah. That uh, they're kind of similar in topic. Psalm 73 has always been a favorite 
of mine. It finds its way into so many songs that I've written. And um, kind of hinging on verse 25. Who do I have in heaven but you? The earth has nothing I desire but you. And my heart may fail, my flesh may fail, but you are the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And the very last line of the psalm is, as for me, the nearness of God is my good. And, uh, and so these couple of songs are kind of about just the nearness of God, you know. Um, at the end of the day, in whatever circumstance, good or bad, uh, the most horrible or the best that day, there is something that remains. The, it's the very nearness of God. It's sweeter. This song would say, sweeter than the honeycomb, safer than the safest home, louder than the echoes of my longing, purer than a wedding bell, better than an it is well, deeper than the oceans of my wanting. Your nearness, your nearness is my good. And so it's just a, uh, a constant. And you'll hear on this record, there's, there's several different places you know, that, um, that we're trying to be biblical and helpful when it, when it comes to like the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, that God has drawn near to us by his grace. And he has cr- created a new temple that he has now, he is now dwelling in. And, um, and just trying to identify that because it's okay. You know, in the bridge, we say, be near, oh God. Uh, and I think that's okay because we want, we want his felt nearness, not just his like judicial nearness. Like, oh, we know that to be true, but we want, we want tangible, functional, experiential nearness. We want to feel, that's what the bridge ends up saying, because we want, we want to feel your, we want to feel your nearness, your presence with us. Um, his presence does not come and go. Um, you can't, uh, you, you know, we, we can be filled with his spirit. Obviously, we see that a ton in the scriptures and in the book of Acts, um, but that doesn't mean that he, um, you, you take a, a, a you know, a pitcher and you start pouring some in and then he goes, he goes out and then he, he pour more in. It just means that um, like sometimes we're filled with joy or sometimes we're filled with anger. You're riding a car with that guy right there. Ooh, just kidding. Rage. It's more like filled what, with rage. What are you talking about? I'm just kidding. He's, he, God's healed him of all that. Um, in that same way, we can be filled, you know, and that's just, I think, you know, it's like we're, um, God is helping us tangibly um, experience the nearness of God that is, that is real in us always. He will never leave us or forsake us. I'm going to, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to send someone down, and he's going to be with you to the end of the age. And, um, and so I, I love thinking about that and embracing that. And so these two songs, you know, one's uh, a, a just a, a song about that, that scripture in Psalm 73, and the next song is Psalm 84. And they both kind of talk about just the sweetness of being at home with God, which is always everywhere. Um, and, you know, with the caveat that we can, it's really okay to ask him to help us experience that today. So, here we go. One, two. Sweeter than the honeycomb, safer than the safest home.
You got a little tempo for this? Ah, I think I remember. Some.
song we have one more song we're, doing, uh, we just, we're not doing the whole thing and uh, you guys are probably tired of us we, the four of you who are still watching <laughs> we have one more song for you and uh it's called steadfast love and uh it comes from um lamentations chapter three and uh i could read that section you should you should go read it but for the sake of time let me just uh tell a story of uh, a moment in my life um, where songs like this were very applicable. And so very, it's like super useful to me um, because this, the course of this uh, song, if you could remind me, oh, there it is. Your, your steadfast love never ceases. Your goodness, God, is calling me to rest. Your mercy just when I need it. How great is your faithfulness. It's like God's mercy um, just shows up right when you need it. I, I was reminded of a, uh, one of my favorite books of all time is The Hiding Place. Uh, it's Corey Ten Boom's story. And there's a moment where her dad, uh, and I think there's a couple moments in the book, but reminds her she would get worked up and worried about the future. And he would say, Corey, when you go uh, to the train, when do they give you the ticket? And she would say, hmm, well, right before I get on. And he would say, Corey, in the same way, your wise father in heaven knows just when you need that ticket. So don't worry about tomorrow. He'll give, it'll be there. It'll be there for you. And uh, there was a moment where I woke up on tour. We were on tour with Phil Wickham. This is uh, 14 years ago-ish. Uh, We've been on tour with Phil every year since then. It was funny. It was, it was the beginning of a, or only that was the first tour, but anyway. Um, and I woke up to a text message in the bunk, the bus bunk there, and from my mom, and she said, you know, your dad had had a heart attack, and, which my dad had had a bunch of heart attacks. I mean, this is number seven or eight, you know. Uh, he's 67, you know. He was always like, and just just he was fine he would just he'd go to the hospital you know Polish sausage got lodged in an artery and then he would um so I call my mom my dad's uh sustained but he's not waking up so he's not he's not doing well I literally like don't even say anything to Shane and the in the in the guys um Phil Wickham actually uh turned into the other Shane <laughs> on that tour yep. um they kept going and that was the best Shane and Shane tour that has ever been. It's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I flew home, and um, God even just began to give me peace on, in, on the airplane. Um, and I spent about a day there with my dad. He looked great. His, he was on um, a breather, a breathing machine, so his body looked great. Um, but we, we knew that he had an aneurysm in his brain, and they were doing tests and procedures to see um, how much damage was done and all of that. And uh, so I had about a day with my mom. And, you know, it's that moment that a lot of you have had where the doctor comes into the room and he, he says to you that uh, my dad is no longer here. 
um, which was odd because his, he was still on a breathing machine. It looked like he was here. And so my mom loses it. Um, and literally, she's just a tiny little, uh, tiny lady. Um, at, the, at the time, she was also 67. She just begins to, to beat on my dad's chest and, and just uncontrollably wail her complaints to God. And, um, and then she started to literally lose her, her legs. And so I, 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 I grabbed her and picked her up. And the sweetest thing happened in this room. Uh, she began, her complaining started to turn. And my mom did not grow up um, as, a, as a believer, as, as a believer in Jesus. God saved her way later in life. She so doesn't know anything about Christian culture. She doesn't know any Matt Redmond songs. But in that room, in, in a like a, a, a minor key of, of wailing, of moaning, she starts to, to say, you give and you take. Blessed be the name. You give and you take. Blessed be the name. And that was all in wailing noises. And that was a gift to me. Um, my mom doesn't even remember that. It's almost like there's rivers of living water flowing out of her. Um, and uh, that was the, I would say, maybe the hardest, darkest day of our lives. But the peace of God and the praise of God was there. The nearness of God was there. And he gave, he gave her a ticket. And he gave me a ticket in that moment. And uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His goodness never comes to an end. He, he, Jesus is in that moment. And so just to encourage you, he is not afraid of your complaints. It's not, not at all. Not knows about them anyway. And uh, look to him. Talk to him. Pour out your heart before him. He cares for you, and he is there to hold you up just like that and, and just uh, minister to you, um, and he has promised to, to uh, he's promised that we'll have trouble, but he's also encouraged us and remind us to take heart, for he's overcome the world, and he's given us a sweet, sweet helper, um, and so we'll sing one more, steadfast love of the Lord, here we go.
a chance to think about you and uh, through the lens of your word. Um, thank you that uh, your word just doesn't return void, that it's living and active. And um, our hope and prayer is that tonight the word of Christ dwelt richly in us as we taught each other and admonished one another. And I pray for um, just with my, my brothers and sisters, just who are watching in this room that you would use this record um, to do that for many. The word of Christ would dwell richly that um, somebody would hear the gospel and it would, um, it would pierce through a heart of stone in a car or a cubicle or a kitchen or somewhere that you would use this record um, to create worship in the hearts of many. And um, we're humbled, Lord, just to uh, be a small part of what you're doing on the earth. And we just want Jesus to come back. And um, I know that there's a lot of hard going on. Um, and you've given us so many gifts to endure it, but we want to see your face. And um, so keep us, Lord. Um, keep your people. Pray for all of those watching, just that you would um, sustain them and hold them up by the word of your power as you promised to. And, um, and we'll give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Until next time. See you.